sounds are approaching and they demand that we like and subscribe. Launch all fighters immediately. Engage the like and subscribe enforcement sequence. Hey man, look at that, it's got fucking turbo. Hit the fucking turbo, yeah, check it out. Hit the turbo. <laughs> yeah, look at it. Look man, that's turbo. Check it out. Yeah, look at the fire. Wicked. Alright. I find your puny turbo disappointing. I have turbo to you, space buttons. Check it out. Uh, yeah, these idiots keep missing and the door clones are getting closer, better close the shields and stuff. Mm -hmm. Engage Kamikaze attack. Yeah, shit buddy, I guess we should have uh, liked and subscribed. Right? What was this video about again? Oh yeah, right, we were painting Japanese infantry. Well, here they are. Um, they're all based up. I don't think I'm going to go through the bases today. Uh, you can look at my KNIL video to see how I did the jungle bases. Um, but we'll get right in to the painting. So I looked at a few websites, or not websites, but a few more YouTube videos. Got some ideas how to paint, and then I went for it. Now if my focus wasn't such a dick, you would see more clearly that I primed this with a very dark brown. And that was just a mix of Vallejo red brown and Vallejo black primer. And I mixed it, well obviously to this color consistency, but it matches up well with German camouflage extra dark brown. So if you have any spots you missed, you can just touch them up with that to give it a nice solid coat. I got the idea from the Battlefront YouTube painting guide to scrape the primer away from the bayonet to get the metallic sheen. So for some this might be a little bit bright. It is a little bit extreme, I think, you know, straying away a little bit from reality, but uh, I like the metallic flash it gets. And in a way, I shine it up so much that the reflection of the metallic part kind of reflects the environment around it. So all you really see really is the high highlights with that kind of blade-like flash. So that's sort of what I went for. But of course, you can always paint those in with, uh, with metallics or um, you can do things kind of like Panzerschule. I don't know if you've seen his video, but he paints his metallics in with solid colors and it looks really good. So if you're looking for something like that, maybe watch some of his videos and see what he's doing. Um, but I'll scrape these off and try to be careful not to get too much um, like scratches into the into the metallics. But if you do, I just go back with some files and some 600 sandpaper and carefully so you don't bend the bayonet every which way, just sand it really smooth again. 
get all the scratches out. Make sure it stays straight. And we'll see if this thing will focus, but probably not. <laughs> this is the bane of my existence. One of these days I'll figure this out. So you want to get something that's fairly solid, like this steel block, just to help keep the bayonet from bending. And I'm going to use a burnisher, which is something you use for polishing metal. This is kind of a crappy burnisher, but it'll do the job. You can get lots of uh, different qualities of burnisher. I used to make jewelry, so I used to have some really nice ones, but I don't know where they are. But this will do. And it will just burnish out even the finest little scratches that might have been left over from even the 600 sandpaper. And then just burnish away until you raise up that shine and get the highlights. And once again, be careful not to bend the bayonets every which way. Sometimes I see figures that are really well painted and the rifles and everything are all bent to hell. <laughs> and I always wonder why. They're made out of metal for God's sakes and it looks so dumb when they're, they're all bent to shit. Um, here's one done. So yeah, just be careful not to bend it. And if you do, you can always bend it back to shape. Once you get all of the filing and sanding and burnishing done, just give it a little brush over with a big brush like this, a soft one, and just brush off all the dust that it might have created in the little paint chips just to clean it up and get it ready to move on to the next fun-loving painting steps. Once again, I'm just going to show stills of my painting steps instead of having it all out of uh, focus, and we're using Vallejo paints. So what I'm going to do for Japanese sort of flesh tone is start off with flat earth and that's going to be for a lot of the shading. So I'm doing everything pretty much except for the space between the fingers, um, where their mouth is, and around the eyes. I keep the eyes pretty dark because it's almost like the eyes are in shade from the hat visor or from the helmets. So I keep them quite dark and it's pretty animated but from a distance I think it looks pretty good. And so for my main flesh tone, I'll mix the flat earth with desert yellow. And that gives me sort of the flesh mid-tone that I want. And for that, I'm painting everything except, you know, shading around the nose and the sides of the cheeks there and around fingers and hands. Um, just leaving the, the straight up flat earth where the shadows would be and leaving the base color, the, the base primer, where the deep shadows would be. And for the highest highlights, I'll just use straight desert yellow. So I'm hitting the top of the nose, top of the cheeks, top of the upper lip, the chin, um, the knuckles, the fingertips, maybe the top of the arms, just anywhere where you want high highlights. And I kind of exaggerated a little bit, just a bit, don't go overboard. From a distance, it'll look pretty good. The first color I lay down for my helmets is chocolate brown, and that'll form the shade for it. Um, for the canteens, which are a similar color to the helmet, I don't use the deep sort of shade shadow color. Um, I'll just go right in with the next color, which is going to be English uniform. English uniform will be the main sort of mid-tone of the color. So that's the, col the color we want to see the most and then I'll highlight it with khaki and I just mix the khaki in about 50-50 maybe a bit less be your own judge don't make it too bright um, if you want an even higher highlight later then just use the straight khaki just for a few little dots of highlight and then your helmets will be done and same with the canteens also to finish off I'll take the straight up khaki and just put a little dot in the middle of the helmet and that sort of indicates where the embossed star was. There was a star shape embossed there. That's the Imperial Japanese Army symbol. We'll move on to the uniform. My base shadow color for the uniform is going to be U.S. Field Drab. So I'm going to put that 
everywhere where I want sort of the uh, the low lights of the uniform to show but I'm also leaving the really dark primer color everywhere where I want the really deep shadows like in the spaces between the, the putties and in between the webbing and the uniform um, just anywhere where you want that extreme shadow however for now we're gonna leave that shade color off the short sleeve shirt that's gonna end up being a lighter color so for now let's just keep those the same dark um, primer color that they were. The dominant uniform color is going to be green ochre. So most of the higher areas of the uniform will be painted that color. That'll be showing the most and then some of the US field drab in the shaded areas in the folds of the fabric. The one helmet there, the guy in the middle, he has a helmet cover. I just cut that detail in with a knife and that'll get pa painted with the green ochre as well, the same way as the rest of the uniform. At this point, we're going to paint the short sleeve shirts in with the green ochre as the sort of shade color, um, but we'll highlight it slightly different. We're going to use a different highlight color for the short sleeve shirts. For the final highlight on the main uniform color, I'm going to mix in some dark sand and just sort of eyeball it to get the right shade. Um, you don't want it to be too contrasty or too bright. So usually when I'm painting I'll do just three figures initially when I'm starting a new army um, and just see how it looks. If you find your highlights have gotten too light then the next round you can go not quite as bright and that way you don't end up doing like 20 figures and then deciding ah maybe it's a bit too bright. If it's just one stand you don't even really notice. So that's usually how I go with that. Um, and just do it to your own taste. Don't highlight the short sleeve shirt though with this color. We're going to use an entirely different color just because I did some research and went with a color that I thought was a bit closer to what I saw. Um, however, that the, the sun flap on the back of the hat there, I did use this color to highlight that. And it, it ends up being a bit lighter, but still the same color as the rest of the uniform. Just for a bit of variation, it ended up looking good though. Or you could probably do that part the same as the rest of the uniform too, if you like. The color I did end up using as the main tone for the short sleeve shirt is Iraqi sand. It just matched what I saw online, so I went with it. And to get our highest highlight on that, I just mixed in some white, some flat white. And again, just be careful not to go too high, but that shirt will end up being quite a light color. I ended up painting all the webbing and belts and the bread bags, that kind of thing, with German camouflage beige. I thought that was a nice color for that. Then for the highlights on the webbing and etc., I used stone gray. The swatch here looks a bit darker than what it is in real life, but it's actually quite a light color. For some of the light machine gun accessories, I wanted a slightly different color. So for those things, I used Panzer Ace's old wood, just to add a little variation. And to add highlights to the Panzer Ace's old wood, I just added some buff. Now we'll get on to the leather, which I base coated with flat brown. But I will say when you're painting, look at some reference photos so you know what's leather and what's canvas and what have you. I mean, it's not essential, but it's just kind of cool when you get everything in the right color, you know, rather than just painting everything the webbing color. For example, uh, the guy in the middle, that rectangular box that he's wearing holds a sighting case and that was leather. Or say the pistols, any, any soldiers that had pistols that that pistol has a leather strap that goes across the body to maintain the weight of the pistol or to sort of support the pistol. And those always seem to be leather rather than the, uh, the camouflage beige color. I like to highlight my leathers with orange brown. Um, I just find that it gives it a nice highlight color. And I really like it, so I do that for just about every leather I do, regardless if I use brown as the base or like mahogany brown or saddle brown. It's always going to be orange brown for me. And then on to the weapons. So I do all the wooden parts on the weapons with a base coat of chocolate brown 
and then a bit of a highlight, well, actually a lot of a highlight with beige brown. And something I would like to mention here too is when you're painting rifles, make sure you get a reference for the rifle you're painting. Because I see sometimes people, they'll paint the metal parts wood or they'll paint the wooden parts metal. And it just looks cooler when you paint it uh, the actual color that it should be for the actual weapon. Just a bit more accurate. And then I move on to the metal parts of the weapons, which I usually paint black gray. And then I'll highlight it with London gray. It looks a little extreme here, but from a distance it looks pretty good because you can see the actual details of the weapon. Otherwise, they would look kind of bland. Now we're getting down to the final details. So for the uh, hats and the cloth helmet covers, I put a yellow dot, which indicates where the yellow star used to go. And behind that, I, I leave a darker color. So one of the darker um, shading colors. I make a bigger dot and then put a smaller yellow dot in the middle. And I usually do that first bigger dot when I'm actually painting the color for that, that item. Wherever you can see the collar clearly, I put the Japanese infantry um, symbol on their collar. Just very basic, just to add a little flash of the red. And once you get all the main colors of the figures down, the final step is to put some of the charcoal gray or whatever color you're using for your um, groundwork on your bases. I paint the bases of the figures that way. So if you don't get the groundwork covering it entirely, the portion that's showing through isn't going to be too obvious. <clears throat> In fact, it won't be obvious at all. <laughs> so yeah, give it a coat of charcoal gray or whatever color you're going to be using on your base. And then that part is done. And there you have it, these Japanese are done. And I'm quite chuffed with how they turned out. <laughs> so thanks to all the people that did painting tutorials before that helped me out. Um, that's why I love these YouTube videos. Um, yeah, they look really good. So I'm going to base these. I'm not going to show you how I base them on this. If you're interested in how I did the jungle basing, um, you can check out my uh, my previous video on the KNIL, um, I show how I jungle base them and it's exactly the same. I'm just, I'm not going to keep repeating the same stuff all the time. Um, so yeah, you can check that out if you're interested in the basing. But once I get these guys based up, um, I'll finish off like I usually do with some stills. The only thing I will say is for the base here, these little ferns. Um, they're little plastic ferns from, I think these are from Notch or Knock. I'm not sure <laughs> how you pronounce that. Probably Knock. But uh, yeah, you get these in little sprues and I just paint them on the sprue. I use German camouflage extra bright green or something like that. And then I lightened it down even more with yellow for the highlights. And so for each of my jungle platoons, um, I'm going to give them like a jungly type plant to sort of um, help me identify the platoons. I mean, I have the labels too, but believe it or not, they sometimes get confused and mixed up. Um, what I used for the, the Dutch that I did previously were these photo etched um, palm plants. And these ones are from Voyager model. They're 172. But uh, you get some really small ones, but even the, the large ones aren't oversized, really. Jungle plants are gigantic, so, so it all works out. So yeah, I'll give you some of the stills, and thanks for watching, and here's hoping this helps you out if you're painting a Japanese army. And uh, we'll see you next time for another fun-loving round. Hello, I'm back again. I just thought um, before I go and finish out 2023, um, I would put out the invitation to you if you ever have any questions as we're going along, just ask in the comments below and I'll try to address those in my videos or I might even make a whole video on it. I enjoy making the videos and I also enjoy the prospect of helping you have a more satisfying time with your miniature dork universe. <laughs> so. Um, 
yeah, just let me know. Maybe not questions like, how do you paint the Germans? <laughs> how do you do German armor? There's tons of great content out there. So, you know, have a look through first, maybe. <laughs> but, uh, yeah, if you see something, or if, particularly if you're having an issue with something that you're trying to achieve and it's just, like, flopping <laughs> and it's making you crazy, well, I feel good if I can help take the crazy away. So, yeah, just let me know in the comments. And uh, if I can... I will jolly well address it. So, see you later. Have a good new year.